for to take it off. present in the upper part of the arm and it is concerned with the rotation of the humerus as the humerus rotates in the shoulder joint so whenever the shoulder joint is formed the rotational movements of the arm of the humerus is medial rotation and the lateral rotation so this is called the rotator cuff and this rotator cuff is actually concerned with the rotation of the arm of the humerus and cuff means the cuff of the shirt as you know we wear the shirt and this is the cuff so shirt is very broad in the upper lip but when it comes near the wrist it becomes narrow so this is called the cuff similarly rotator cuff rotator means the muscles which bring about the medial and lateral rotation of the humerus they act as the rotator cuff because as they come near the insertion they are very very close to them their origin is very wide and these rotator cuff is formed by the four muscles three muscles they are called sit and fourth is also as sit is the formula to remember the muscle inserted on the greater tubercle they are the topmost on the greater tubercle is the s the supraspinatus then posterior part the infraspinatus and below t this t stand for t is mind so s i t so three muscles attached to the inserted over the greater tubercle and only one muscle is attached to the lesser tubercle here that is the subscapular so these four muscles together they form the musculo tendinous cuff or what is called the rotator cuff their origin is very from the very large area from the scapula but as they approach the insertion their tendons becomes aponeurotic and they almost fuse together they glue together and they form a narrow cuff like structure around the fibrous capsule of the shoulder joint and they grip the shoulder joint and keep the head of the humerus in touch with the glenoid cavity in all rotational movements of the wide range of the shoulder joint so that is why it is called the rotator cuff so these four muscles one is the supraspinatus then i stand for infraspinatus and t for t is minor and s stand for subscapular so all these four muscles they constitute what is called the rotator cuff so how they form the rotator cuff they are on the scapula the medial part of the scapula is the spine of the scapula This is the superior angle, superior border, and this is the supraspinal notch. This is the glenoid cavity. This is the lateral border of the scapula. This is the inferior angle. So above the spine, this is the supraspinal fossa. This is the infraspinal fossa. And here, like the articulate the shoulder joint, that is the head of the humerus, and this is the lateral is the greater tubercle. Radial, radial tuberosity, 
is the medial border of the humerus and this is the greater tubercle. The sit relation is formula S I T sit. So this is how the the posterior or the scapular region of the body. So the supraspinatus muscle takes away from the supraspinous fossa from a wide area and the tendon passes medially below the acromion and is inserted on the top point of the greater tubercle. Top point of the greater tubercle. So it is almost a horizontal muscle, supraspinatus. From the infraspinous fossa, this whole area is called the muscle infraspinatus. And this is the later border of the scapula. From its upper part, with the gap, this is the origin of the T this minor. And from the lower part of the scapula later border, this is the T this major. So the teres minor muscle takes away from the two areas and passes on the posterior upper aspect of the shaft of the humerus and this muscle is inserted over the lowermost impression of the greater tubercle that is the teres minor, a small area for the insertion. See the origin of the muscle is very wide from a very large area. But as it approaches the insertion, it becomes narrow because it has to form a narrow cuff. And this is the fibrous capsule of the shoulder joint. And similarly, the infraspinatus muscle it runs posteriorly behind the fibrous capsule of the shoulder joint and inserted the middle impression of the greater tubercle made for infra spinal. So this is the how the infraspinous muscle taking you know, from a wide area of the posterior supraspinal infraspinal fossa and this infraspinatus muscle is inserted on a very narrow space on the greater tubercle. So that is the SIT sit. In the formula to remember muscle inserted on the greater tubercle. So as we know the wide area of the origin is there but as they go near the insertion they becomes very very narrow and their tendons they are apomelotic also and they almost fuse together and the fusion they form a rotator cuff. They grip over the head of the humerus and keep in all movements in touch with the glenoid cavity so they stabilize the shoulder joint as well. Regarding the, subscap the subscapularis muscle as we have already done that lies in the front of the shoulder joint because it has to insert on the lesser tubercle. So this whole area is the subscapular fossa. So wide area is the for the origin of the subscapularis muscle. But this muscle is inserted into a very small area on the lesser tubercle there. On the front of the front and the medial aspect of the upper end of the numerous is the insertion of this is the subscapularis muscle. So and from the anterior side subscapularis and from the posterior side, the three muscles they are glued together and they form a cuff-like structure 
cuff of his shirt like a narrow part that is gandhi rotator cuff so when we cut these fibrous capsule and when we cut the these three tendons posteriorly and subscapus and medially what picture we got it this is the glenoid cavity and around this we have cut the fibrous capsule attachment beyond the labrum glenoid so around this posteriorly there is the uppermost is the supraspinal descender then this is the infraspinal descender and then this is the teres minor tendon and and really there is a subscapularis tendon insertion so this subscapularis this is supraspinal tendon this is the infraspinal tendon this is the teres minor and you see the muscles their insertion in the tendons they are thin and aponeurotic and they are almost glued together and they form a cuff like grip over the shoulder joint and this is how they call the a rotator cuff is there now the function of this cuff is to keep the head of the humerus in all positions because these all muscles they bring about the different movement of the shoulder joint as you know the supraspinatus it is inserted on the top point of the humerus and the supraspinatus bring about the abduction of the humerus up to 90 degree then the infraspinatus muscle which is inserted over this area from lower part when it is moved it bring about the lateral rotation plus it brings about the extension also similarly the teres minor which is taking over from this area inserted over the lower point of the greater tubercle so when it consig so it also bring about the lateral rotation and extension while the subscapularis muscle which is taking origin from a very large area is inserted over the lesser tubercle and when this muscle acts so it, it bring about the flexion movement plus it also bring about the medial rotation also so medial rotation and flexion is done by the humerus plus subscapularis also pose the humerus in the upward position so during the medial and lateral rotation movements the head of the humerus comes very very close to the glenoid cavity and these four muscles they further stabilizes the shoulder joint in all movements of the medial rotation as well as the lateral rotation because in these rotation there are chances that the head of the humerus may slip or may dislocate because of the small glenoid cavity triangular shallow cavity and a large spherical area of the humerus so both are not reciprocally the same so there are chances that they may slip so this is how we do the rotator cuff with all these four muscles last is the applied anatomy of the rotator cuff so rotator cuff or the muscle tendon cuff is very very important thing clinically because of its applied aspect so first most common problem of the shoulder is the tear rotator cuff tear so any of these four muscles they undergo a rupture either this rupture may be in the tendon or the rupture may be in the muscle itself so whenever there is a forceful 
lifting of some heavy weight because of the forceful lifting of the heavy weight or just pushing some heavy object so there are chances that the muscle or the tendon may tear so tear of the muscle may be partial or it may be complete so depending upon the violence on the muscle so whenever there is a partial or the complete tear of the muscle of these four muscles of the rotator cuff patient come with the painful movement of the medial rotation as well as the lateral rotation or there may be pain in the during flexion as well as the extension because these four muscles they also take part in the movement of medial rotation lateral rotation flexion extension as well as the 90 degree abduction because supraspinatus is also so any muscle of the rotator cuff can be injured and patient come with the painful movements at the shoulder so that is called because of the tear of any of these four muscles second problem comes is the tendinitis so tendinitis is the condition in which due to the inflammation of the tendon may take place and inflammation of the any tendon most common it is involved in the supraspinal tus tendinitis it is most frequently involved muscle in the supraspinal muscle because it has to pass below the acromion process in a very narrow space between the fibrous capsule and the acromioclavicular ligament also so whenever there is a tear of this tendon then what happens the abduction will comes painful the patient come with the painful abduction it means the muscle undergo the tendinitis or there is a forceful injury to the muscles while abducting and it is very common in the sports injuries because the sports injury like the tennis and like the rugby or in the swimming also so all these movements they bring about the rotational movement of the shoulder joint and there are chances that there may be injury either there may be tear of the muscles or there may be tendinitis of the muscle because of the friction between the ligament and the bone and that can come the painful movements of the shoulder third condition related to the rotator cuff is the bursitis as we know bursas are there between the tendon of the muscle and the bones so whenever this bone and the tendon in between them there is a bursa is there to minimize the friction but sometime due to inflammation or due to the infection or due to the repeated act of the muscle of the arm for example in the painting the painters they are very much suffer from the rotator cuff injury because of the repeated same movement of the shoulder joint so there is overuse of these muscles and overuse of either of these four rotator cuff muscles lead to the bursitis so the bursa undergo inflammation because of the repeated action same is also can happen in the swimming also so repeated movement of the same movement by the rotator movements rotational movement at the shoulder joint the bursa undergo inflammation they get enlarged in size and enlarged in the size of the bursa will dilate and they will stretch upon the rotator cuff so all these three sit sit and subscapularis all these four muscles they come from the scapula and they grip around the 
So the repeated action of the muscles in professional people, these people are very prone to the musculotendinous tendinitis or rotator cuff pain. So regarding the treatment, in the treatment part, first we will give the treatment, do not overuse these muscles. As in the painting or in the swimming or in the tennis, so we want some rest to these muscles. So repeated movement of these muscles may bring about the these problems, any of the problems. So first is the rest for three, four weeks. It may bring about the repair of the muscles. And the movement of, becomes painless after this. If there is a muscle tear is there, in the muscle tear, we do the arthroscopy. In the arthroscopy, we make a small cut in the shoulder joint and we put an arthroscope inside and we visualize the position of the various tendons or if there is any tear of the muscle. Then we have to do this surgically approach and we have to repair the muscle or the tendon if it is problematic. Another is the physiotherapy. The physiotherapy also involves the certain exercises which will bring about the movement around the shoulder joint which are painless. A regular exercise of these muscles will strengthen the muscles and the pain is subsided by the painkillers. The tablets are there. So this is the mode of the treatment. If all these myers, usually the patient come of these problems after the age of 60 years. Or in the sports uh, injuries, these people they come after the age, may come at the age of the 40 plus. So when the repeated actions, they are not avoided. Or if it is, recurrence is there, then the last treatment of the rotator cuff is the surgical. And in the surgical, what happens? We open the shoulder joint and we replace the tendinous cuff, we repair it, and this is the last resort, the surgical intervention may have to take place. We have to replace the shoulder joint even. So these are the measures we take in the musculotendinous cuff or what is called the rotator cuff. That's all.